What about Christ? Was Jesus antisocial? Was he, did he hold himself aloof from others? Turn with me to Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. Luke 2, 52. The scriptures say, and Jesus increased in wisdom, that's mental, and in stature, that's physical, and in favor with God, that's spiritual, and what? Man, that's social. Jesus was a social being. He was a social guy. He was our example. It is through the social relations that Christianity comes in contact with the world's. This is how Christ is revealed. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. The more friends we have and maintain, the more, by God's grace, Christ we can reveal to others. And on the flip side, the less Christ we are revealing to others, the less friends we're going to have. Because who wants to be around someone who's always grumpy? It's always talking about the faults and issues of others. Who's always wanting to complain or talk about their, all these challenges that are taking place. We want to be around people that can give encouragement, that can strengthen and help others. I find it amazing we live in a society where it's like the two most common phrases is, Hi, how are you? And what is always the response? I'm fine. I'm good. How are you? Good. Okay. And then you walk off and go your merry way. I did my part. And there's other times you see people that are over here and they're, they're alone in the corner. You're like, how are you doing? I'm good. And then you're like, really? You don't seem very good. It's like, yeah, I am. You're like, oh, huh. okay. And you just think, well, I tried. I don't know what else to do. How, how many people have seen that before? Oh, yeah, all of us. Well, the thing is, we have to recognize one thing. Our heart, when our heart is broken, we have these fences. And the purpose of a fence is to keep things out and keep things in. And so what we need to do is recognize, as people have these fences, our goal as missionaries, we cannot reach them with the gospel if we do not earn their trust. Trust is the key that opens the hearts of man. And it's through gaining the confidence of others that we can point them to Christ. And so what we have to do is we have to be diligent to know the state of our flock. We can't just say, how are you doing? I'm good, and accept it as that. We have to realize that we need to push through these fences. We need to not take no for an answer. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. When I was in high school, I was going through a really hard time, and I was just, I was chronically depressed. One day, I remember I was sitting at the library, and my friend asked, he said, Enoch, how are you doing? And I said, I, th- I looked at him, I was like, do you really want to know? And then his response was unlike anything I've ever heard before or after that time, and it really melted my heart. He said, yes, I do want to know. I ask you because I'm your friend, and I care about you. Enoch, how are you doing? And in my, in my mind, I just, my walls were coming down, and he was getting through. And... I was just thinking, wow, in that moment, this might be an opportunity. He might be someone that I can trust who I can actually have some hope or encouragement. And really what a lot, a lot of people are doing is they're just waiting to see. When they say no, they're testing you. Do you really care? Or are you just asking the most famous question in, in our culture? <clears throat> Can I trust you? That's what they're trying to figure out. If you really cared, you would persevere. And when people ask, how are you doing? Oh, I'm good. And they walk away. They're like, the person's thinking, 
They knew I wasn't good. They don't care. They don't care about me. And it just reinforces Satan uses the opportunity to tempt the person to feel alone, isolated, discouraged, helpless, and that no one can relate. And unfortunately, at that time, I, although his, his uh, response was very warming, I just did it. I wasn't quite ready. And I didn't let him in. But that changed my life. And it really impacted me because I realized that there are some people that care. Um, and I realized, too, going through that experience, I can say that I know when I'm, when I'm trying to encourage someone else, I know that just the first few no's, I have to expect, and I have to ignore, and I have to keep persevering by showing love. It's that, that self-sacrificing love. It hurts to be rejected, doesn't it? But we've got to persevere. 